Hi everyone, I'm Swift, and today I'm going to be talking about the latest D23 and Disney movie announcements and how they are just a continued sign of the Disney Ouroboros machine. I'm tired, folks. Obviously, I'm a huge Disney fan, but this just isn't fun. At D23, Disney and Pixar announced all of two original projects, one of which we've already known about for a while, and then something like 12 sequels or derivative content. And that's if you don't include Star Wars or Marvel. This has to be the most disappointed I've been after a D23 reveal probably ever. It just so thoroughly shows the absolute worst of what Disney has become. A self-loathing, self-praising, self-consuming Ouroboros. And it doesn't seem to show any signs of pulling the tail out of its mouth anytime soon. The best I can say is that at least there wasn't a Josh Gad Hunchback announcement. I don't really know what the goal of this video is. I'm just tired and I'm gonna try to keep it brief. When the Moana 2 trailer initially dropped, I didn't bother saying anything because, well, a lot had already been said. Moana looks weird and off-model, it's going to be terrible, we're back to the Cinderella 2 failed TV show to movies route, and it probably won't be nearly as respectful to Polynesian cultures as the original was. The rest of the announcements either had only been rumored or didn't really fall into my interests, like Mufasa. But dang, seeing them all lined up and fully announced is just deadly. It's just all so creatively bankrupt. These aren't about telling us more about the characters or exploring their world anymore. These are about milking an IP until the public is completely sick of it and it's dead. I mean, Toy Story 5? 5? <laughs> what next? Uh, Woody has to reunite with his buddies or something because being homeless sucks? The little girl grows up now? I got nothing. I don't want to know. What? Oh, no, oh, hang on. Apparently it's technology bad, toys good. Just going by this one picture. Which is really funny since they've shown video games and computers in like every Toy Story movie as a neutral force or just another way to play. Not to mention, like, we don't know what this kid is doing. Are they reading a book? Playing a game? Because, you know, I did those things too as a kid at night and I'm 30. I just did them the old fashioned way with a flashlight and the Game Boy Light attachment thingy. Whereas a modern kid has it all in one device that lights itself. And if the kid is watching a movie, then Disney really needs a mirror. This is some faux Luddite tripe, and I hate it. Just stop telling me the story's over and then adding on more and more, but then I know what it really is. You recognize that we audiences have an attachment to these characters. Sorry, IPs. And we will keep coming and keep buying everything. From collab makeup, jewelry, handbags, video games, whatever else. They figured out that we will come and we respond favorably to what's familiar. And it's true. I own a Tangled Lounge fly bag. I have Sleeping Beauty and Star Wars earrings by Girls Crew. I am currently spending hundreds of hours hand embroidering a Season 3 Rapunzel dress. I looked at the collab section first for Colourpop's makeup palettes. And I almost bought the Grogu one until I remembered that it's like puke green. We are cogs in a well-oiled machine that takes advantage of the positive feelings these movies and franchises give us. I don't condemn that entirely. I like my Aurora earrings, and I wouldn't be sobbing over this dumb keyhole if I didn't genuinely love Rapunzel. I'm a nerdy person, and always have been. And they are a company. It's Disney's right to make stuff and put it up for sale. But damn does it hit a point where the greed outweighs the creativity. From overpriced advent calendars with PNGs of Mickey stuck on the back of discs, to predatory game monetization practices, to just endless landfill-filling merchandise schlop. Because we all need a Funko Pop of the live-action Mrs. Potts and Chip. Ugh. It's just so bankrupt of creativity and good intention. It's lazy, exploitative, and it sucks. And like, you'd have thought they'd have learned. I mean, Wish and Pinocchio and so many others should have given them that chance to learn. But nope. We are still getting Snow White, despite all of the criticism. We are still getting Mufasa, despite basically no one liking the original and truly no one wanting a prequel about Simba's dad. Remember when they said they waited like a decade for the right script to make The Incredibles 2? Guess that's not what's important anymore. Frozen 3's concept art looks literally like a screenshot of Sleeping Beauty with Elsa and Anna imposed over it, and what I hope to God is not Loki in the bottom corner. But those horns, them being in Scandinavia, ugh, it, just, it totally is, isn't it? Obviously not the Marvel Loki for the record, but the trickster god Loki of Nordic mythology. Disney just needs to stop and think. For five minutes, this method of nostalgia feeding endless IP growth isn't sustainable. Eventually, we audiences will be fed up. 
Just look at the drop in Marvel movie views. Those are so bad, they've resorted to bringing back Robert Downey Jr. as if he has enough star power to save this living corpse of a franchise. And then the two original projects are Elio, the Lion Gets You in Trouble alien movie that I'm really not excited for, and who can blame me? Given Disney's track record with 3D animated alien movies, no one should be excited to see Disney try to make yet another wacky First Encounters movie. The other project is Hoppers, which we know nothing about, but I honestly had to double check to make sure it wasn't a spin-off of A Bug's Life since the bad guy in that movie is named Hopper. Which, it's really sad that because this list is so spin-off heavy that I actually doubted one of the actual original movies, which I'm sure is a great sign for its future marketing campaign. Disney used to be heralded as the end-all be-all for its creativity and its artistry. Disney artisans pushed boundaries in animation, storytelling, and created truly timeless tales that can be enjoyed by everyone. I think we all know that those artists are still there, still trying to make magic happen. But Disney as a corporation is only seeing immediate payoff dollar signs in its head and is missing the bigger picture. If they want more successful IPs, they need creativity. Overall, I'm sad, I'm tired. D23 used to be one of my favorite times of the year. I would get so excited to see what cool new things to expect. But this year was probably the worst ever. And unless they do a complete redirect, this snake is going to run out of tail to eat. I just want to see original stories again. I really don't think that's asking for much. But the way this is looking, we won't be seeing those for a long time, and it's likely we've entered another Disney Dark Age. Only this time they're actually financially stable. Which just makes the lack of effort even more of a slap on the face. On my review of Wish, a commenter asked me if Disney was lazier with Robin Hood or Wish. And see, the thing is, those are apples and oranges. When Robin Hood came out, Disney was failing financially and had to cut a lot of corners by reusing a lot of old animation assets, but you could tell that there was still a lot of heart and care put into the film. Wish is the opposite. Today, Disney has practically infinite money, and they didn't even try. All of these new sequels smack of that. And that just shows us viewers how little they respect us and our time. Something that I'm certain of will only lead to problems for them down the road. If you liked listening to me rant, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Sometimes I'm even positive about things. Like Iwaju, which you should watch. And if you want to see more like this, consider buying me and Fox a coffee. We'd super appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.